What's going on guys? My name is Tommy. Welcome back to the channel and hey, as always, happy Friday. We're here today for the second to last episode of the Inner Sea Region, a five minute tour. Next week we'll put out a timeline video to wrap it up, but today it's all about Nidal. Real quick before we get down to it, this episode of the Inner Sea Region, a five minute tour, was brought to you in part by Jesse Brooks. Jesse, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your support. It's because of patrons just like you that we get to do all the cool stuff over here at Black Dragon Gaming that we're getting to do. So truly, from the bottom of my heart, it means the world. Now let's dive in. So, Nidal is one of the oldest surviving countries in Avistan. It was founded during the uncounted years of the Age of Darkness. Present day, it's beholden to the neighboring infernal realm of Cheliax, but it retains significant autonomy to pursue its own shadowy goals. Little is known of the warrior culture that prevailed in Nidal before the coming of the Starstone blacked out the sky, but what is known is the terrible deal they made. In the lightless years of the Age of Darkness, the ancient lords of Nidal prayed fervently to their now forgotten deities, begging to be saved from extinction. Unfortunately, it was not their deities that answered this plea, but the Midnight Lord, Zon Kuthon, freshly released from his age-long imprisonment on the Plain of Shadow. He offered them a simple bargain. He would save them from the horrors of the darkness in exchange for eternal obedience. With no other options, the rulers of ancient Nidal agreed. Ever since then, Nidal's destiny and Zon Kuthon's have been tied together. During the Ever War when Cheliax declared its independence from Taldor, Nidal was invaded by Cheliax, who eventually claimed Nidal as their own in 4388. While the rulers of Nidal have bristled under this rule for centuries, the death of Aridin and the rise of Diabolism in Cheliax have led the two states to become firm allies. So much so that some in Nidal whisper that the invasion during the Ever War was just a cunning trap laid by Zon Kuthon to lead Cheliax to darkness and evil. Nidal is run by the Umbral Court, the shadow-touched aristocracy who have ruled Nidal almost since Earthfall. In ancient times, the rulers of Nidal were the ones who made that dark pact with Zon Kuthon, and ever since, it's been their descendants who have reigned, using the powers of darkness and shadow to ensure that their rule is unquestioned. Few have the courage to stand against the whims of even the most minor member of the Umbral Court, for to do so normally means death in the most horrific manner which we can imagine from a court that serves Zonkuthon. The inhabitants of Nidal live beneath the shadow of a pact made in ancient days. The people of modern Nidal still pay for this ancient pact and to this day live in fear of the dark powers Zonkuthon grants the Umbral Court. While the Umbral Court rules the land using divinely granted shadow powers, the peasants of Nidal live much like the peasants of everywhere else, except with a far greater fear of their noble lords. In addition, Nidal boasts many fearsome beasts of shadow hiding within its borders, and hey, you can find some of those monsters in the recently released splat book Nidal, Land of Shadows. The Menandora Mountains in Nidal are particularly infamous for these fell beasts. In addition, they're known for being the home of several umbral dragons. So if I were to have a game set in Nidal, I think this is the place where I'd bring out all of those shadow creatures that exist in all of those bestiaries, not just the shadows that drain strength and make the rogues and the Kensai and everybody else who's dumped their strength die in a round or two. No, I'm talking fetchlings, I'm talking, again, umbral dragons. Zon Kuthon also has his own particular brand of evil outsiders, the Chitin, and those Chitin have a variant tiefling ancestry, the Shackleborn. This is probably the place to break them out. A lot of times when we think outsiders that we're going to send the party out to fight, we're thinking demons, we're thinking devils, maybe some daemons, maybe some proteans to shake it up. I've never really seen anybody use chitons before, because tieflings aren't scary enough until they have about 50 facial piercings and about 75 tattoos. So what do you guys think about Nidal? Have you ever brought a party through here? Have you ever built a character who was from Nidal, perhaps a shackleborn tiefling? Or have you ever waged war against Zon Kuthon and his favorite outsiders, the chiton? Don't forget guys, patronage is going so well over here at this channel that we'll be running Doomsday Dawn 
the first ever published bit of content for Pathfinder 2nd Edition as soon as it's out. Six lucky subscribers to this channel will get to run through it with us. So if you'd like to learn more about that giveaway, follow this card right up here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. The next episode of the Inner Sea Region, a five minute tour, no, actually the last episode of the Inner Sea Region, a five minute tour drops next Friday.